Well, good morning, everybody. Today, I'd like to be showing you how to um, use fabric and, and a slightly flexible spine to bind your junk journals if you're making them from scratch. I will do a complete video of how to do everything step by step, but I do see on Facebook and on YouTube comments a lot of people saying that when they are working with papers and things to make um, junk journal covers, they're really getting a lot of wrinkling and the paper tears and things like that. So I'd just like to show you a simple method that I have used very successfully for a lot of books. I used to make them and sell them. And what I have here are several signatures that I have stitched together separately. So each of these signatures have been individually stitched together. And um, we have about six of them here all together. So individually stitched. Then I have taken this gauze-like piece of fabric. It's a strip a couple of centimeters wide and the length of your spine. Um, this fabric that I've got is called mull cloth, M-U-L-L. -L. But if you don't have mull cloth where you live, I suppose you could use something like a piece of gauze or even a different um, nice firm piece of calico of some sort. What this does is, is that you put glue on the actual spine area where you're going to be joining the signatures together and then you glue this down just on that spine area. So while you're working and you're getting this prepared, it is a good idea to have something like um, an old magazine cover and you put that down over your signatures so that when you are gluing down the side with your, um, your wood glue or your PVA glue, that it doesn't go onto the signatures itself. We need to have this not secured to the front of these covers. And that will become clear in a moment. So you need to do that in advance. Trim off any excess here that you might have. And then to assemble your actual um, cover, you need to have your piece of thick card. I use gray chip, which is a thick card. It's very similar to what you would get Slightly thicker than a cereal box, maybe um, if you get those notepads with lined paper that the kids use at school, it's probably something like that. And your cover needs to be just slightly bigger, um, a little bit around the top and the bottom, and a little bit more than that around the side. So that will depend on you and what you intend to put in. Obviously, if you're going to make a really fat journal, then give yourself a little bit more space on the front end of the actual book. But the rest of it um, is not much of a margin, just a couple of millimeters either side. You can see here, there's just a few millimeters here. Then you've got a front cover and you've got a back cover. And for each of those, you need to cut a piece of fabric that is maybe about two centimeters larger on either side. So those covers are separate and you've got a piece of fabric for each of those. Then this tape that I've got here is called Bookbinders Tape. Um, I'm sure you'd be able to order it online. <coughs> Excuse me. But if not, um, again, I think you could use something like a strip of calico or something. Just use some fray check to stop the edges from um, fraying there, but it doesn't really matter. Something just to bind it. And then you will see that I have glued into the center of this another strip of gray chip card, which is the same size as the covers of my book. And this is going to be your spine. And I'm going to be gluing these ultimately together so that there is a slight gap between the spine and the covers of the book. And that's going to be what your hinges so that your books don't all sort of get either stuck together so the pages don't open out flat or the paper starts to tear on the inside of your cover. So that's what's going to give you the actual hinges. So now we're going to go on to another one that I've prepared. And I'm just going to show you how to actually stick the um, fabric down. Okay, so obviously there are a lot of glues and things that you could use to stick the fabric down with. And that's absolutely fine. Whichever one you choose is great. But I do find because fabric is quite absorbent, that if you were to use a very wet glue, then the chances are that you might find that it actually goes through your fabric and it's not so good. So what I like to use for my fabric is a glue stick. This is a dry glue and it dries quite quickly and um, it doesn't come through on the cover of your fabric. So that's what I'm going to do. So you would take your glue stick, sorry, I'm undoing you. Take your glue stick and you work all the way over this 
and then you stick this down onto your fabric and then you will cut on the corners once your front cover has dried like this one you'll cut a little notch there not right up against the card because you don't want that corner to stick through when you're folding this over but you'll cut your little notches so that you can then glue this down like that onto the actual cover of your book okay so you're going to do that with both sides of your covers and you still have your spine that is ready and waiting for you right so now we get on to the next section and here we have our book covers that have been covered and the glue has dried sorry they're all different colors but that's just the way I'm working at the moment and I have my signatures here with my mull cloth that is still left unattached to the side of the book and you'll see that I've got some covers of magazines these are insert onto the pages here while I'm gluing them and you'll see what I'm going to do with that now so I'm going to put this between the front page and the second page and one at the back that's going to go between the back page and the second last page I use these covers over and over again so that's why they've got a bit of stamping there so I'm just going to set that aside for now so at this particular point what we are going to do is we're going to take our covers and we're going to attach them to this bookbinder's tape. You can see here that I've marked off the sections. We want this to be in line with the spine over this side. And to do this, I'm just going to use some of this wood glue. You could use gel medium if you wanted to. So I'm going to apply this quite generously over here. And then I'm just going to use my brush to spread this down. All these um, surfaces are very absorbent so you must allow for some of the glue to settle into the surface and that is why I'm putting it on fairly generously. Um, you can always wipe off a little excess if you need to do so. Right, so I've done that. And before I glue my cover down I just want to wipe that away so I don't pick up a mark. And now I'm going to lay this cover down so that it lines up with my spine but leaving those few millimeters between the spine and the cover that's your hinge don't forget that that's the hinge part that makes it easy to open and close your book now I'll just do the second side here and because I um, find it's quite you know time consuming if you do everything start to finish every time you need one I tend to stitch a lot of signatures together all at once and then I will create all the spines and the covers and things so I tend to batch my work and then when I'm needing a new journal all I have to do is choose the cover that I'm going to cover the um, cardboard with and um, A for away. Um, if you're only just doing a one-off that's absolutely fine but that works for me. Okay so again just I'm going to wipe this off here. Right so taking the second cover I'm now going to just line this up here, leaving my little gap in between. Get your covers to line up nice and square. You can always line a ruler up at the top and the bottom if you want to actually make sure that they are completely uh, flat. Now the next thing is, is to fold this, mull, um, this book binder's tape over the two top ends and the bottom ends of the covers so that they join them nicely and that you don't have an edge sticking out um, from your book. So I've just applied some of my acrylic glue, my PVA glue or my wood glue, whatever you're going to be using. Make sure that you get right to the edges. You don't want to go in with glue afterwards because that will look a bit messy on the front of your book. Wipe the backing here. And I'm going to fold this over, press it down, and then I'm just going to use the back of this blunt pair of scissors to crease this where the actual gap is between the spine of the book and the actual covers. So this will dry down nicely as a hinged part to my book. Right, so the book covers have been covered and we've now put um, some wood glue or you could use your craft glue underneath these um, bookbinders tapes. We've folded them over 
um, to secure them and now you can see you've got a nice neat edge along either edge of your spine and I've simply taken a pair of blunt scissors and creased it down in that little gap that we have between the book covers and the spine and this will just make it easier for the hinge to actually work. Now we're going to attach the signatures to the actual spine of the book and you remember that I put this piece of paper between the front and the back and that's to stop the glue coming forward. So what we're going to be doing now is first of all to attach this mull cloth to the spine of the book and then we're going to be opening these pages of the signature and gluing that to the inside of the cover to give it a nice neat edge. Okay, for this I'm going to be using my wood glue because I find this is by far the easiest to work with here. Remember we're not dealing with fabric that might have glue showing through it and it starts to look ugly. So I'm just going to squeeze some of this on. And I find the reason why I'm doing this is because the, um, the wood glue or the craft glue dries slightly slower. So if I do need to adjust this a little bit, that it gives me a nice opportunity to do that. Again, you need to make sure that you are really well covered with glue. And on the inside of the cover, I'm not too worried about glue showing through because I'm going to be covering this inside edge of the fabric um, with this piece of paper or the card from my first page of my signature. So this is all going to be covered over. Make sure that you spread it nicely. You want to be able to see that the glue is white and right up against the edge of the spine here so that you don't have any problems with the hinging part of the spine. Okay, make sure all these edges are covered. And you can see just with me spreading how absorbent this is. I do like to brush backwards and forwards and then up and down just to make sure that I haven't missed any spots um, because it's horrible to have a dry spot and then the front inside page of your book has a bubble in it. I don't personally like that so I do now once I've spread my glue brush it up and down and then I brush sideways like this just to make sure that I'm covering absolutely all the edges that I need to. Okay so this will take just a few minutes to do. Nice and wet and sticky but you're working with cardboard for your inside cover and not paper so you don't need to worry too much about this buckling as such. Now I'm going to carefully turn this around and I'm going to hold my signatures over the spine and then I'm going to take my mull cloth and press this down onto the actual spine. It might be slightly bigger than you wanted, but this is a far easier thing to trim. Now I'm going to take my brush and just brush this down nice and neatly so that this is well attached to the actual inside cover of my book. And I'm going to simply take this first page and now press it down. You want it to lie nice and square with your inside cover and this is why I like to have the craft glue or the wood glue on the inside because it gives me an opportunity just to shift it down. Because I'm holding the spine upright you can see that it's very easy to actually work with this. Press it down right to the edges. You don't want any of this popping up once it's dry. And then I just simply take a damp cloth and soften away these glue edges so that I don't have any marks showing through there. Okay, so this is all nice and secure on that edge. Now I'm going to lay this down flat. I'm going to turn my whole project around and I need to make sure that I've got glue on the spine here. So I'm going to do that as well as the inside cover for this next section. You can see it's very simple here. You don't have the usual problems that you have with paper when you use fabric because paper by its nature, because it's made up so many layers of pulp, will start to wrinkle and this doesn't wrinkle at all, which is absolutely great. It's very forgiving. I also like the fact that um, your fabric doesn't fade like paper does. Sometimes, depending on the dyes that have been used in the paper, they might tend to fade a little bit over time and if it's a cover of a book, it doesn't always look so nice. Fabric I do really like. In fact, I often think 
Why don't we cover our kids' school books with fabric? It's much more durable than brown paper or whatever else we've been told to use. Anyway, that's just my quirkiness. Um, okay, so once again, make sure that you put on a generous layer. Remember, you're working with card, so it's not going to buckle the same way that paper does. Make sure that you cover everything really generously. If you're working in a very hot climate, um, then you do meet, need to make sure that your glue is white, white, white. Um, I know when I'm working in the heat of summer here that if I haven't made sure that it's really well covered on the top, by the time I've turned my back to pick up something and come to glue things down, then the glue is already dry. So you can see I'm going top to bottom and side to side, making sure that the glue is well covered over these edges. And this is the last little bit, so it's really easy. So we're going to now take the front cover and the spine and lift that up onto the actual spine. That, because it's just got pressure on it, will come down quite nicely. Then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just glue my mill cloth onto the inside cover of my spine, like so. And if you get a bit of glue on this inside page, don't worry because it's coming down onto the cover itself. And now I'm going to take this inside cover page, lining up so that I can see that I've got nice edges. Make sure that you start pressing down from the spine towards the outside edge of your cover so that you don't get a bubble between the spine and the cover. Like that. Press down all the way to the edges and then just simply take a damp cloth just to smooth away any of this excess glue. The glue will dry clear, so it's not a problem at all. Right, and now what I will do is I'm going to simply lay this down flat and I'm going to put a book on it and leave it to dry. And then I will remove these and I will have a nice journal ready for use. So I hope this has been helpful for you and I would really love to hear from you. So put any comments that you have or any questions, I'd be happy to ask, answer those and please subscribe to my channel. Okay, bye for now.